The year is 1984. During one fateful lunch, Action Park owner Eugene Mulville said, Quick, 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 give me a napkin. I need to write this down. What if we have a water slide with a looping? And since he wasn't an engineer, but only the owner of the park, they built it without asking any further questions. They tried to bribe their employees with $100 each to test it, but nobody wanted. And so they sent a couple of test dummies down the slide, which came out on the other side missing limbs or decapitated. And so naturally, the cannonball loop opened in the summer of 1985. This is the story of the downfall of Action Park and why they shouldn't have put looping on a water slide. The world just minutes away. The action never stops at Action Park. Action Park opened its doors to the public in Vernon, New Jersey in 1978. One of the big and innovative features of Action Park was that it gave a lot of control over the rides to the guests. So instead of roller coasters, you had carts, boats, swings and slides controlled by the riders themselves, which would have been risky, but okay on its own. But they also had their own brewery on the premises, as well as a flip ton of bars and beer stands placed strategically around the park so attendees would be kept inebriated at all times. But at least the staff were responsible with handing out that alcohol. Except they weren't. And as you might imagine, like a lot of amusement parks, the staff themselves were mostly underage teens doing their first summer jobs. They had little regard for enforcing any sort of safety measures, including not serving alcohol to other minors or themselves. You could say they were wildly unprepared for the job and themselves always drunk enough to go wild. I think it says a lot that 21-year-old Jim Desay, who worked a second season at the park, was director of security. But at least the rides themselves were meticulously designed and maintained with safety first in mind. Yeah, right. Strap in. If you can find any working seatbelts, because this is going to be a rough ride. The Colorado River Ride This family-friendly river rapids ride consisted of underinflated and overloaded rafts that would slam into walls and sharply angled concrete. Because in order to make it an authentic river ride experience, they had the great idea of making cement look like sharp rocks. Let me reiterate, they made cement look like sharp rocks. Which is like McDonald's saying for an next McChernobyl burger, we made plutonium look like uranium. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Thanks, I hate it. The ride also had a pitch black tunnel where rocks were placed at head height. N needless to say, no helmets were made available, but concussions were handed out for free. The Alpine Slide. Sitting on a sled, riders descend down concrete tracks using a handbrake. If you went too fast, you would fly off the track and be catapulted down the hillside where a family of rocks would await with open arms. Bonjour. If you went too slow, the next rider would crash into you and you both would fly off the track. Luckily, the personnel would always leave enough space between the riders. Right, Jimmy? Jimmy? Oh no, Jimmy. Oh no, Jimmy. Oh no, Jimmy, no! Oh yeah, and no helmets and the brakes didn't work properly. EMTs would stand at the bottom of the slide, literally waiting for accidents to happen. In one year alone, this slide caused at least 40 serious fractures and head injuries. And of course, it was the most popular ride in the park. The title. Employees would lovingly name it the Grave Pool, a pool for up to a thousand people or 500 if you ask any health and safety advisor, it would generate three feet high waves relentlessly for 20 minutes at a time. Since it was sweet water, not salt water, you would sink a lot faster than in the ocean. Uh, luckily, the personnel would never let it get overcrowded though. Right, Jimmy? Jimmy? Oh no. No, Jimmy, no. An average lifeguard has to rescue around one or two people over an entire summer. At the Grave Pool, they had 12 Red Cross certified lifeguards stationed at the pool at all times. And they would have to save around 30 people every day. There's nothing in the world like action park. However, in many cases, the guests were not entirely without fault. The Action Park Gladiator Challenge allowed guests to fight jousting matches against park employed gladiators. One guest felt that the gladiator was a bit too rough with him and so he came back with a group of friends for retribution. The ensuing brawl between employees and guests had to be stopped by the police. The police were also caught in on another occasion when a group of visiting bodybuilders repeatedly threw lifeguards into the pool. Leading to the epic showdown we've all been waiting for, lifeguards be bodybuilders. This Saturday. <laughs> Action Park is better than Broadway. In 1986 alone, the accident toll was reported to be more than 100. 
However, there were probably many, many more because the park also got into a lot of trouble for, get this, failing to report accidents. Name a more iconic trio. Action Park, Accidents, and Failing to Report Accidents. Woo! The Tarzan Swing. People would swing on a rope and had to let go at the right time to fall into a pool of water. If you hung on too long, you would hit your feet on the concrete on the other side. But even if you did it properly, you'd be dropped into extremely cold water. Many had to be rescued because they were in shock. And one guy even died of a heart attack. The skate park uh, closed after one season because the bowls were poorly made and had lots of sharp protruding concrete edges. One employee said, quote, skate park was responsible for so many injuries, we covered it up with dirt and pretended it never existed. The Cannonball Falls water slide uh, would send unsuspecting riders through a closed tube that stuck out on the side of a cliff with a two-story drop into, quote, slimy green water. These are the most amazing rides in the world. I love it here. The Super Go-Karts would have been a safe ride in slow go-karts if it wasn't for a lot of booze and park employees knowing how to circumvent the cart's limiters by wedging tennis balls into them. The result was drunk bumper cars without seat belts or helmets at 50 miles per hour. The Lola cars. The Lola cars were the even faster version of the go-karts. On top of that, former employees have said that they would frequently break into the nearby brewery, steal some beer, and then take the cars out of the park onto Route 94. Race like a pro! In 1987, the director of the ER at the nearby hospital said that five to 10 people were brought there daily from the park. But in a hospital, the action ends at the hospital. The super speed boats. Yeah, because a park like Action Park needed a ride called the super speed boats. Anyways, of course, the super speed boats was a ride which guests would use to play bumper boats at 40 miles per hour. Many boats capsized and on top of that, riders were ejected into a pond that was full of snakes. Bumper boats, on the other hand, was the safer alternative to the speed boats. But the engines, many times, leaked hot gasoline all over the riders. Also, if you were reasonably tall, your legs wouldn't fit into the boats, instead be hanging out and crushed in the case of a collision. The Aquascoot. The Aquascoot was a water slide you went down with a sled. The idea was that once you hit the water, you'd skip across it like a stone. However, if you weren't in the right position, the sled would sink into the water and you'd be flung off head first. Other times, riders would still be leaving the pool, only to have the next rider crash into them. For fuck's sake, Jimmy. The Kai Experience. The Kai Experience was a tranquil ride that used underwater fans to slightly agitate the water. However, a man once got ejected from his kayak, stepped on an exposed fan cable, and three people got electrocuted. The ride was drained for investigation and never opened again. And then there was the Kamikaze Slide. But that was just a regular water slide where no injuries happened. I think at this point they were just having a laugh. Lastly, however, the napkin idea itself, the cannonball loop. Aside from the fact that the slide created forces of up to 9G, here is why it was a bad idea to have a looping on a water slide. First, the water didn't have enough pressure, so you would just splash into a puddle and you were stuck. They thought, oh, no problem, we'll just increase the water pressure. When the water pressure was enough for the water to go through, it wasn't enough for the test dummies, which would be violently thrown about and end up without heads and limbs on the other side. They made some adjustments, and when they managed to get the dummies through in one piece, most of the time at least, they opened it up for regular people. However, regular people come in all weights, shapes and sizes, and flavors of stupid. And so many times people would still smash their heads, lose their teeth, and get stuck in the slide. The other big problem that caused a lot of injuries was that all of the sand, stones and broken teeth just couldn't wash out. And so these collected themselves at the bottom of the loop, forming a surface that acted like the cursed crossover of sandpaper featuring Lego that you would hit at a force of 9 times your own body weight. Jesus frick. The slide caused so many injuries that it was closed after just one month. And that says a lot when it comes to Action Park. If you needed another red flag regarding how dangerous Action Park was, enough injuries occurred that Action Park actually bought the nearby town of Vernon new ambulances to keep up with the injuries. Of course, at some point, insurance premiums for the park were just 
too much and an endless string of lawsuits and settlements eventually caught up with Action Park. And after years of negative headlines and dwindling traffic, Action Park closed its doors in 1996. How's your day, Jimmy? Uh, nah, just a lot of stupid guests again. I think I saw a giraffe. If you like this video and you want to see more like it in the future, subscribe to my channel. Thank you as always to my loyal patrons. Thank you to my new patrons. David, Lobster Mafia, Bjorn, King Charles II of Spain, Justin H, Tanner, Breton, Meatloaf. And if you want your name to be next in the credits of all of this channel's videos forever, do what these lovely people did and subscribe to my Patreon. Also, you can now find me on the hellhole that is Twitter and TikTok. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Have a lovely day. There was a mandatory training for employees where they had to rescue a pretend drowning victim. If you were newly hired, you'd have to put on a special harness and be the drowning victim. Instead of doing the rescue thing, the other employees would just haze you, push you around and then abandon you in the water where you had to figure out how to get out yourself. Somehow. Oh, Jimmy.